What's the big old deal? We're back with No Jumper Sports, and I got my boy Jason here, man, a familiar face around the building and around the world, man. How you feeling? I'm good. I'm good. I'm happy to be here. Man, I appreciate you coming through. My guy, appreciate let's get you it. Come through. I know y'all uh, missing Josh, but Josh is on a well-deserved family trip right now. He's at Disneyland. Aww. Oh, let's get it. Shout out to Josh, man. We miss you, man, but we got Jay here. He going he gonna to have your back, bro. I'm going to hold it down for you, Josh. You already know, man. So first and foremost, bro, thanks. And then I want to, like, talk about this new series that's out, Winning Time, bro. Oh, yes. Got to. What is, what's your take on that, bro? Let's, let's talk about it. Well, first of all, man, I've been looking forward to it. Just uh, I'm a big uh, Adam McKay fan. Mm -hmm. uh, he the... Uh, producer director of this but that's fire you know what i mean he's he's done a lot of my favorite shit and uh you know like anchorman and talladega nights and all that yeah. stuff but then uh man even uh succession which is oh, just a man. whole other turn and that's another current series on uh that channel or that network but um man waiting for this very very hyped that it came Heck out at yeah. right perfect time you know everybody was riding on the euphoria stuff i'm mm -hmm. glad that my sundays got replaced with a uh, winning time but hey no lie no lie euphoria cool though it's, it's super catchy but right now man that winning time bro it i seen that pop up on the netflix i mean on the hbo i'm like what they about to talk about right okay boom i click it Instantly, bro, they start talking about Jerry Buss. And I'm like, wait, this is about to be the backstory about everything that was going on behind the scenes. Yep, yep. Oh, my gosh. That was the best idea possible, bro. And I love uh, I love that, like, uh, period pieces, you know. But yeah, everybody tried to do, like, real, real old school. I like stuff that's not too far removed. Right. And, and honestly, I like stuff, too, that gives, like, a real context that's, uh, like, uh, applicable to today. Mm -hmm. Like, that show really kind of shows you that's the very, like, that's step one of mm -hmm. the NBA changing into the game we know today. You real know? talk. You know, which that, is real different. That Showtime Lakers, bro, seeing that be created and how that was created, Magic sitting there and saying, what does Jerry Buss say? Why can't basketball just feel like that? And he says, to me, it does. Exactly, yeah. Like, what yeah, is man. Showtime? Yeah, but Buss, that really lets you kind of see the inside, man. He was a real visionary with it because – I mean, it was basketball was, you know, it was popular, but it was it's crazy to hear that at that time, man, basketball wasn't even like in the top five sports. That, right. That, it, was, uh, it was on his way out, they said. Bro, golf was bigger than basketball. That's like I couldn't I can't even <laughs> fathom that nowadays. But uh man, just knowing that like that was the start of it, you know? And mm -hmm. and honestly, man, I mean, I didn't grow up in LA, but I I always knew about magic. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, and I knew his impact to a degree. But, man, not realizing, like, how much he actually changed the game yeah. or was a part of that era that really yeah. changed the game, you know? So, yeah. in, uh, in the Lakers organization as a whole. Like, bro, that was crazy, bro. Be Him being a part of all of that, like, that moment, bro. Like, bro. the league is about to go out. This team is about to go out, possibly. You feel what I'm saying? And it's just like, Magic, you stepped in, bro. And just changed the whole atmosphere with Jerry Buss. My favorite scene, bro, I'm not gonna lie in that, when he looked at him and told him, like, and I need a partner. Yeah, like, you feel yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah. And, bro, that right there. And then the Norm Nixon scene, bro, Norm Nixon scene. Like, do you feel like that really went down like that? Cause I don't. I'm nah, just putting, I, I, I'm gonna say my piece first. I don't feel like that, that, that moment went down like that. I agree with you, cause I just can't imagine. I mean, you gotta think about it, man. Like, magic. At this point, he already won a, a national championship in college. I mean, he was riding pretty high. I'm going to assume that wasn't the first time he faced real criticism or <laughs> right. challenge or adversity. And, man, to, re to be getting to that point, and, I mean, just off of that one thing at that party, to be like, you know what, I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to forfeit, you know. Right. or right. Yeah, I'm going to just go back to school. I'm not right. going to take this uh, guaranteed money on the table right now. I, just I don't the, see it. I just won a championship versus Larry Bird. Exactly, in exactly. In college. But in this moment right here at this party in front of 30, 40, 50 people is not about to break magic down. Yeah, I think if anything, you know, he probably went back to like, he probably just took that as some motivation. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure he ha it, it probably brought him down for a day maybe. Yeah. You know, just to think like, man, what do I really got to do? Like, you know, okay. Maybe there's maybe there's some some uh some shit that's valid to what they're saying. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, man, all the guards is six two, six three. Mm -hmm. They quick as hell, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna get stripped constantly and, and this is just a lesson. But mm -hmm. I mean, you know, he figured it out. So he was already I don't yeah, I don't agree with that scene. I like it a lot, 
because it's a lesson learned that you teach in other kids, you know what I mean, in that situation. You know what I mean, but uh, the the network's gonna do what they do to make it a whole lot more juicier. And shout out to that scene because oh, yeah, y'all yeah. y'all had me confused. I was like, man, <laughs> magic the magic man ain't gonna never back down like that, man. I just like that they did it at uh, and that was at Donald Sterling's house, <laughs> <laughs> and that was really just laying some foundation because they were like, oh, he wants to own a team, but he too cheap. See, <laughs> I said Donald in the '80s or yeah, something like yeah. that. I said the the second worst Donald from the '90s. <laughs> man, that's crazy because. Uh, yeah, you know, you don't realize, man, a lot of these dudes been around. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, the era that I even saw Bus was like, you know, uh, with Kobe and just, you know, all those moves he was making. Being there, like, at the games, cheering, like, whole family there. Like, bro, he was such a, like, real dude, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, shout out to Jerry Bus, Rest in peace, man. But, man, that's, it, it sucks, man. But you being remembered in the right way right now at this moment, bro, because that's that HBO series. Didn't his daughter put that one together if, if she has something to do with that? I don't know. You know, I, I, I caught that in a little something. We were looking at some behind-the-scenes stuff, mm -hmm. but, but I was trying to look it up. I, I didn't see anything about her having, like, an official thing with mm -hmm. it. But, I mean, you know, I think the way they portray her is kind of cool regardless. Yeah. You know, just uh, – it's kind of cool how she came into the organization and she even said what she, she was just like, because he was like, well, you think uh, Jerry West is going to take orders from you? Yeah. And she was like, I'm not trying to give orders. I'm just trying to work I'm here. Just I'm just trying, trying to work. You know? Like, yeah, she was a she was a student of the game. She was a student of the game. And that's dope, man, that some parents, man, if I want to say this, too, as a parent, bro, your, your child, they should want to be like you. You feel what I'm saying? That should let you know in life when you're doing something good. As a parent, you, when your kid want to be just like you or do something that you did in life, you're doing the right thing. So don't never think that it got to be money, shoes, all this, that. If your kid want to be like you, doing a good job. Hey, we see uh, Jeannie, right? Yeah. She yep, did yep. her thing. Way to work to the top. And if you want to come on down to No Jumper Sports and Ooh. talk about this, come on down. Let's get some of that real, real, real insight. So, kind of uh, clarify, you know, what, yeah, what, what's real, what's what, not. Exactly. Like, you know, that'd be crazy. But, shout, uh, uh, shout out to the kid, too, Quincy. Man, yeah. Quincy Isaiah. Yeah. yeah, man. That's crazy. And you know what? I was like, uh, I was kind of investigating after I saw him because I was yeah. curious as to, like, how tall he is in real right, life or right, whatever. I'm right. finding out, oh, man, he, he was a QB. He's like 6'3". So yeah. he's not Magic's height, but, but I mean, he's there. You yeah, know? you he, know the camera angles. Oh, you yeah, know yeah. The they, <laughs> they did a good job. They did a good job. Uh, I think the casting was good. Mm -hmm. the, the dude who plays uh, Kareem, mm -hmm. wow, that, he, to me, that look on point. From, yeah. Just from my perspective, that as was, much as I know. What did he tell the kid? Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I like, I like how they just kind of portrayed <laughs> that whole thing. I like how they did the, uh, you know, him... Uh, filming the scene in mm -hmm. there or whatever for the movie Airplane or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, uh, man, one of my favorite features of this show is uh, what they call, you know, breaking the fourth wall. Okay. And I like the way they do it because it's not one person only who breaks the fourth wall. Yeah. Because then it's like automatically you think, oh, man, that dude is the main character. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, this is, you know, it's about uh, Bus and mm -hmm. uh, Magic Johnson. Magic. So they, they're the two, like, on all the ads and the posters for everything. But mm -hmm. at the same time, you know, they're not, they leaving room for like all these other little yeah. stories, you know? Yep. Man, even the, uh, even the lady who, uh, who worked for Cook yeah. before, you know? Yeah. Cause I like the way that, uh, you know, cause <laughs> Bus, man, he was smooth, man. That's yeah. what they were trying to show you. He was like a, you know, he was enjoying that Playboy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But, but, you know, he, he also hit her with a slick, you know, like he was just like, oh, yeah. you, you the one who brought uh, mu live music act mm -hmm, acts the into, the, into the uh, sports yeah. venue, you know? Yep. And it's like, if you think about that, that's crazy to me. I can't even imagine that uh, arenas and shit weren't used for concerts. Like, right. that's crazy to me. And then he just approached the, he let us see it, said her name and yep, everything. Yep, yep. What's dope is I like how she fixed her hair before she went in oh, there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She like, oh, the, the young homie told me, yeah, I'm yeah. about to keep my job. <laughs> she like, girl, I'm about to keep my job. Man. Excuse me, let me go walk these drinks up in here to yeah, these players. You know? I mean, that's a, it was a different time. So it's like they had to keep it real. You know, that's mm -hmm. really how it was and shit. I mean, you know, there's a lot of it probably still going on today, but. Yeah, you know, it's probably way more like that's really what it is. But, man, all in all, I think, uh, you know, it's a good storytelling mm -hmm. about some shit that's like uh, it's in the past, but it, it's really like showing you the beginning of the path of like mm -hmm. where we at today. Real talk. But what's crazy is, man, even with as much change as they got in there, like think about how far apart that is from 
all the other eras of basketball that we for had real. since then. So, man, basketball been through so many transformations. Yeah. But it's good to see. To me, that's the real start. Man, because you go from Showtime, then you got Lob City, then you right. got like, you feel them? Because I remember the era where it was like Blake Griffin and everybody throwing lobs to each other. You know what I mean? So just to see the basketball, like now it's threes. You feel what I'm saying? Oh, Steph right. Curry came and it's just like, just you got you got to have a wedding. Bro, it's like everybody got to be a shooter. Everybody got to be off the dribble. Like, yeah. it's not. And it's crazy because, you know, that's really what they put out there was, oh, he's too tall to be a point guard. See what I'm saying? And it's like, man, that that just lets you know. Let people put you in that box and uh, shit, you know, just change the expectation. You know, yeah. like forget what they really want or what they trying to put you in. Just do what you do. Spud Webb. Oh, my God. Spud Webb. Muggsy Bogues. You feel what I'm saying? Like Nate Robinson. These dudes Bro. is out here hanging them. Crazy! I yeah, see man. somebody that short get up there that high and hang it though. Oh yeah, bro. You know it's crazy, man. So so far on no jumper sports, bro. What's been one of your like go to interviews? I mean, you know, I'm gonna just go ahead and give it right off the rip. Is uh, man, Ricky. You know, shout out to Ricky Williams, man, bro. I had we Classic. had we had a legendary moment in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. It was Crazy. a good. It was a good one, man. I, everybody need to run that back if you ain't seen it. But man, it's For just real? a lot. A lot of nice little jewels in there. Ricky, somebody, man. He just had a crazy path, crazy <laughs> career, and he's still an interesting person, man. Heck you know. Yeah. But uh, man, yeah, he gave some cool insight that I thought was kind of crazy. Yeah. You know, uh, I didn't expect to hear that. I oh, didn't expect to hear God. that. Oh, my God. This is probably what I didn't expect for him to say, yeah. too. Let me hear it, bro. Well, I mean, you know, when you get when you had the conversation about linebackers. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. I got to hit it again. I knew it. I knew it, bro. That is crazy, bro. I mean, I wasn't surprised about Ray Lou. I mean, I get that. I mean, that's he defined that era for sure. But, <laughs> man, to hear that, Erlacher was just... Bro, Man, oh my gosh, crazy. bro! When he was like, "Yeah, um, yeah, everybody was uh juiced up about Erlacher. Yeah, he was a good athlete, but he doesn't make the list, right?" I'm like, I'm "Not like, make the list? Come on, man! Erlacher bro. earned a spot." <laughs> but I, but I mean, but at the same time, you know, shit, I, I wasn't hey, there. <laughs> Brian, man, hey, man, I know you ain't just going, you know, come on down, man. Come talk about this, man, because I didn't see you blow up a few holes, right. take off a few helmets, man. Let's talk about it. We probably could pull up some film of Brian, you oh, know man, what I mean? Oh, man, we got to give him his respect. We got to yeah, give him his respect. Yeah, straight up, man. Shout out to you, Ricky. You For feel real. what I'm saying? But Brian Erlacher, man, God, dog, bro. That was just so funny, bro. There might be an underlying personal story we all know about. Right. You, know? you feel what I'm saying? So. <laughs> We ain't going to just, you know, speak on that too much. But, yeah, bro, that question, bro, is crazy because in, um, in our next interview, this is a sneak peek. Kasim, like, oh, Kasim Osgood said yes, the same sir. thing about Ray Lewis, bro. Of course, of course. Ray Lewis, man, come, come on, on, man, come on down. Let's talk about it, bro. Yo, that who, would be legendary. Who would have been one person that you would have threw in that linebacker conversation right there? All right. I mean, we just going to go real, real modern day. Mm -hmm. Just got a ship. I mean, we got to put Von Miller in that category, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, okay, because I could see that, too, because Von Miller was blowing shit up, too, man. You got, uh, you got, uh, what was his name? Suggs? Oh, yeah. Terrell Suggs. We got, um. I mean, uh, you know, you could go. I mean, the Ravens kind of been held that down for a minute. Uh, I mean, at safety, though, was uh, Ed Reed. But, uh, I mean, if you go a little bit further back, what's his name, Bullware? That's what I'm saying, bro. Oh, yeah, Bullware was hey, a beast. He said Teddy Bruschi. Oh, <laughs> uh, what's the other dude? What's the other dude from the Patriots? Uh, man, I was never a big fan, but I, I give him his props. Was uh, Vrabel, Mike Vrabel? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He was pretty cool. Is that the dude who wore the neck brace? Uh, yeah, I think so. I, I think, think he did, he did wear the neck brace. Yeah, 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 on me. He was cool. He was, he used to do his thing, though. But, man. But the homie in the Bay, man, you know, uh, for the Niners, man, uh, shit, man, Willis, bro. You know what I'm saying? He doing his thing, bro. Patrick. Willis, yes, sir. Bro, crazy. Like, yeah, dude you gotta put him in that. too. Yeah. Dude was a beast, man. But right now, we about to give y'all the Kasim Osgood interview. Jay, I appreciate you lining appreciate it you. up, man. Did a great job. Let's go. Everybody let Jay know how he did in the comments, man. No Jumper Sports, Kasim Osgood interview. Let me know what it do in the comments below. Well, man. hello there, folks. This is another episode of No Jumper Sports, and you're here with 2C Kiki, Big Ski, and Josh, the Professor X himself. And why don't you tell it? 
Kasim Osgood is here, Let's everyone. Go. Let it be known. <laughs> What's up, brother? What's going Ladies on? and gentlemen, I'm brought to you by Dadville USA. <laughs> Hello there. Dadville USA. Dadville USA. 12 year journey in the NFL, bro. Yeah, it was some fun times. I tell you, there's a there's a whole list of uh, events and moments that I could say that would be the, the the cornerstone of what being in the NFL is about. But yeah, yeah, it's so just it's right good. now though. Let's talk about Boston, Massachusetts, though. Ooh, Beantown. Okay, B- Beantown ever, is yeah. real. You ever heard of Hash Brown Town? I have not heard of Hash Brown Town. Have you ever heard of Nashua, New Hampshire? I have. Okay, Hash Brown Town. I have never been there, yeah. but. Uh, they, they have a hash house in San Diego that's really good for around that that, that morning wake up coffee that you smoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, what that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Let's talk about Boston, man. Tell me about how that was for you uh, for coming up in uh, Boston, man. How's Boston. That? So uh, we left when I was four. Mm-hmm. Okay. But uh, the last thing I remember was uh, having to chisel that ice off of the windshield. Mm-hmm. Not have to experience that again until I played in Detroit. But yeah, okay. Boston. Those those what they call a noista. No it's this, this shitty weather pattern that just makes life miserable. Mm-hmm. Remember, there was one going through there uh, on our way out of there. And mm-hmm. I remember everybody being so happy once you saw there was a little sunshine in December in your another state. So, I mean, uh, Boston was where a lot of my family still lives there. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of rich history there. Funny thing is that my first touchdown that I ever caught in NFL was by Doug Flutie. Mm. Uh, it was a Boston legend. So when I folks. caught that, when I caught that, I got so many uh, emails and stuff saying, "You know who that? You know who that is? And yeah. This is a Boston legend, and they give me the whole history and this and that." God, Boston College. Yeah, the guy had a wicked fucking, wicked fucking arm. <laughs> yeah, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. So, um, four years old. So yeah, he wasn't pretty out much out there too much. Where'd you go after no, that? After that, to, uh, Salinas, California. Yeah. So yeah, NorCal mm-hmm. guy. That's where yeah. you play high oh, yeah. school ball at too. High school ball in NorCal. Yeah. How is NorCal? NorCal, uh, I was just talking earlier, like the, the weed in NorCal is, is like fresh cut grass, mm-hmm. whereas that smell of like the dirt coming out of your lawn, like you would okay. go to uh, your, your grandparents' house and they don't mow the lawn as often as you do. They have that, that <laughs> stale grass, just dirt smell, like you smell earth. Like I don't want to smell earth when I open up a bag of weed. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's fact. He came on my- Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Man. Oh my gosh, y'all, y'all yeah. go get it, y'all go get it. Yeah, so you know that that earth smell. Like mm-hmm. If you open a, a bag of weed and you smell earth, you're like, hold on now, this is either it's not done or it's this ain't weed. This right. Ain't so when you go to NorCal, yeah. you know some people say, oh, I, I have weed from NorCal, but they're not in NorCal. It's like mm-hmm. that farm to farm to table type. You go to the the store. I mean, you go to the side of the the highway mm-hmm. where the fields are, and they have this little wooden stand, and you could buy it fresh right there. Mm-hmm. And they say you just go behind that rock, you smoke it real quick. It's something like that where you, you get it you, fresh, man. like Look it's cut you. off the vine and dry. You sound seasoned, experienced. Yeah. Oh. Huh? Oh, I grew up my whole life <laughs> watching everybody pipe. smoke the Champelli. Everybody uh-huh. from day one was smoking some of the best green, and I could just smell it as a yeah. kid. Like you smell, it's like hey, Uncle said he's burning, burning incense. Mom, can we get the incense that Uncle burns? <laughs> you can't have that. <laughs> Snap down my throat like I did something wrong. Like, hold on, <laughs> I just I'm just asking for the. It smelled good. Mm-hmm. You don't Man. burn that incense. Yeah, if they when, do, I whip your ass. But when it's a barbecue going on, who made the, the ribs? Bar- yeah. 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 You, you get to asking about the barbecue. Sit your ass down. You ain't eating yet. <laughs> Mom, how come every time before we start eating, I smell incense? <laughs> <laughs> and then, then everybody started eating all the food before I get some. I only got one rib last time. How'd you come up here like this? This like, what's up, bro? <laughs> nah, dude's maximizing his time. Like, oh my gosh! I tell man, you, I got two kids. They're four and three. And when you have, when you know, dad did his double duty, daddy daycare. My wife has a full time job. She started mm-hmm. her own business. Yeah. So uh, as a supportive husband, mm-hmm. I said, you know what? You start your business. I retired. I need something to do anyway because I'm going crazy. Mm-hmm. Oh well, here I'll pop two kids out and make your life miserable. Oh my goodness! No, man. God bless. My wife, she's amazing. Here we go, bro. (laughs) Three kids in three years, she had, and we lost our first one. But then right afterwards, we had the next one, and then right after that that. was the next one. Yeah. And you know, thank God, you know, we were able to get that, and Mm -hmm. we we sort of managed our ways through that. Mm -hmm. But the two kids at the same time were her trying to start her own business. Mm -hmm. I had to give her so much free time, and then stop being so loud in there. I'm like, you know, my black people are loud. That's just how we are. My my wife is Lebanese, (laughs) so I have to constantly explain the black culture. I'm like, niggas is just loud. Sorry, I'm sorry, but I can't stop. It's not ever going to stop. So if you leave me because of that, just know now you signed up for this. This is what you got. 
I do not feel like I'm interviewing the pro bowler right now. You know, are right? really my homie, bro. <laughs> Hell yeah, doing? man. No, well, you keeping it real. I like got, that I shit. I got you. I got Thank you. you, man. This is fucking content, you gotta, you gotta maximize, content, You got to maximize content, your time. Content, content. Uh, uh, my wife time. said you get this much time and you got to pick the kids up. So in your mind, like, look, honey, I only need this much time. Okay. Mm-hmm. And she's like, okay, but I'm just telling you. Say, honey, look, it's just this much time and I'll be mm-hmm. good. And as, as you progress to keep telling her, you know, in Hollywood, there's, it comes in threes. You've got to keep lower and lower and closer. And finally, you're like, honey, just let, please let me go. Mm-hmm. Please, just let me go. <laughs> and then when you get back late, I you come in. I go uh, outside. I'm so sorry. In the rain. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Gotta go. I feel that, bro. So, North Salinas, though, high school, though, how was that? Yeah, high school was real. I mean, uh, if anybody's familiar with Salinas, uh, it's, it's gay infested. There's a lot of gangs right there. Mm-hmm. They have the prison, Sold Out Prison is a yep. hub for uh, the major hub and the, the squared up line between North and South. So, yeah. there's a lot of gang ties there. A um, couple families that, that sell. Thankfully, um, you know, I, I went to high school. I had older brothers who mm-hmm. knew the path for me to go. So, they kind of say, you know, like, get up out of here, go back yeah. and study. So I wasn't allowed to party, nothing like that. And it was because my dad wasn't there. Mm-hmm. So my older brother felt like he had to be extra to, to make sure to get the point driven home. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, so, yeah. you don't want to be the, one of the little bros out there hanging around, losing your life over some dumb shit. And him, him being your big brother, yeah. that wouldn't be cool for him to just let you do that. Yeah. So shout out to your big bro, fam, 100, real talk. Oh, yeah. But yeah, man, I want to know about some, like, some games, like in high school. Like, do, I want to know what was your most memorable touchdown in high school? Oh, in high school, I would say it was my my junior year. Mm-hmm. There was a receiver that was uh, he was a year a hold of me, a year ahead of me, mm-hmm. and he just was phenomenal. And I, I remember going into junior year, I'm going to be on the team with them. He's going to be phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I just got done having a great sophomore year, so how, what do I do to to step up to show that I belong on the team? Right. And mm-hmm. I remember the the very first game we had. I remember catching a touchdown before he caught a touchdown mm-hmm. for that season. So I got the first touchdown of the season. Mm-hmm. And I remember him coming over to me and telling me, he's like, you know what, hey, good job, man. You, you deserve to be here. And this is going to be a fun year. Mm-hmm. You know, and then from there, he, he just went on fire and the dude's catching everything. But <laughs> to, to have that dude come up to me, like guy that I looked up to. You know, Do you he, remember who that was? It was Mike Garvin. Mike Garvin. Yeah. How was did he did he go did he go on? Um, no, he went into the military afterwards okay. after college. But um, okay. I mean, he just, he was at, at the time, you know, you have your, your growth patterns. And mm-hmm. I, I was one of those late bloomers. So yeah. at the end of my sophomore year, I grew six inches in one summer. So oh. going into my junior year, I was a completely different body type. Wow. Yeah, so it was a little bit to adjust to. That's but, uh, fire, bro. Yeah, that, that first game, my, my varsity year, was probably the best touchdown. And then uh, senior year, I remember there was a scout for San Diego State that was at, in, in the, at the game versus Gonzalez. Mm-hmm. And I remember I had uh, three touchdowns and about 150 yards receiving that day. So, what? Yeah. Oh, and I was on five catches. Five catches? Yeah, it was like five for 150 with three touchdowns. That's sick with it. So what did yeah. you do on the other two catches? Oh, uh, <laughs> those are my smoke breaks. That <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's a bro. monster game. Yeah. Yeah, in college. Uh, five catches? Three All touchdowns. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, out of, out of high school, I, I went to Cal Poly before I went to San Diego State. So okay. I was at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. It was, uh-huh. it was one double-A football, so kind of wanted to go to play better competition. But while I was at Cal Poly, I remember we played uh, Hofstra, and I broke a record, single-season record for uh, most yards in a game. At Cal? And, yeah, at Cal Poly. Uh-huh. I had uh, 13 catches for 373 yards and two touchdowns. That's fucking oh, sick, yeah. bro. Yeah. And you up here just big kicking it like this. Like, that's tight oh, yeah. as hell. Some people be uptight when they had a journey like that, bro. They just, oh, man, fuck this little young nigga, man. Oh, he want to <laughs> talk to me about this shit. He should have known this shit. No, I'm just yeah. like my viewers. I want to know. I'm interested. Yeah. You feel mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And hell yeah, that shit is dope, bro. That you could come up here and be full of energy like this. Like, that's fire, man. Yeah, from from a, from a man's point of view, the, the humbling experience would be um, – Coming off of stellar years in college, like at San Diego State, uh, me and J.R. Tover have, still have the NCAA record for most yards and catches by uh, tandem uh, on a team. Mm-hmm. And having those kind of moments and stellar moments and breaking records and going to NFL, the humbling moment is football is what I want to do for a living. It's what I've been doing since I was 12 years old. I love it. So to give it up and have to go do another job, I didn't see that right now for, for myself. So mm-hmm. when I broke my hand my rookie season mm-hmm. at, San Diego, at the Chargers, uh, uh, Marty Schottenheimer comes to me on the sideline. It's the last game against the Niners, and it's the where they make the final cuts for the final roster. Mm-hmm. So he walks over to me, and he says, look, if you don't 
go on this kickoff and make this first tackle, um, you're going to have to find another job on Monday because you know, there's not a room for you. You have a broken hand. We have David Boston, Rache Caldwell, Tim Dwight, yeah. Eric Parker. So, you know, and those are receivers at this those point. Are, those are guys exactly. that, I mean, David Boston is, you know, an icon in yeah. the NFL. He's yeah. one of the biggest receivers uh, God's ever created. <laughs> man, that, I was going to ask you about that too, man. Like going from special teams to being a receiver, like how, what is that like? Yeah, uh, yeah, so, so yeah, yeah, to that point, like. I was in college, I'm stellar receiver, but then you get to NFL, now you're doing, you're just doing special teams. And to make the team, I had to do that, and mm -hmm. I was good at it, and they didn't have anybody else that was willing to do it. I did it because I was pissed off. Like, mm -hmm. hold on, man, you tell me I can't get one catch, I can't get one snap, I can't even block somebody as a receiver just to tell my kids, hey, you know, honey, yeah. I played mm -hmm. receiver. I did what I so, grew up doing. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, so, I mean, I was out there like a, a mad, a mad titan trying mm -hmm. to just crush everybody. Mm -hmm. Man, Literally. so you just make that's, make the most of what you got. That's tight, man. You bit the bullet and 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 chose to like say fuck it because I need to pay these bills. Like fuck what y'all talking about. I need to do what I got to do. I, I mean, know I know two people that's like that, bro. Like Richard Sherman, yeah. for instance. I played football with him on my high school team, and he was a receiver. Mm -hmm. He went to Stanford. You feel what I'm saying? Play receiver. So it was sick to see him switch. You know positions. Pause. <laughs> and turn into a cornerback yeah. for the yeah. NFL. Yeah. So it's like, and I thought about it, I was like, man, that's fucked up, man. They just made the homies switch, you know what I mean? Pause. And it's, what if his career go down now? Because yeah. they did that at this point. But, and then I thought about it like, no, he's going to read every route because he played receiver. Oh, yeah. I so, mean, I feel oh like there's gosh. a lot of guys like that that like, look at Julian Allen, he played quarterback in college. Mm-hmm. He goes from quarterback to receiver. Mm -hmm. That's a massive shift too. But as a quarterback, you're familiar with all the reads. You're mm -hmm. familiar yeah. with, you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of things where I feel like college players make that switch. But special teams in particular, I feel is like this huge chip on your shoulder. Like, a lot of people don't pay a whole lot of attention to it. But like, the best coaches really hammer down on special teams and know how pivotal those few plays every game are. Yeah. You know, that's fine. You know, I feel like obviously Bill Belichick's one of those guys who takes the Patriots, and you know, I think of like Matthew Slater as like a, yeah. another guy who's like a special teams Pro Bowl type guy. Um, Yo, man, your name Steve, comes Steve Tasker, yep. Larry Izzo, mm -hmm. uh, Alex Bannister. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Adelius Thomas was a guy that I had to go against. Yeah. I mean, when you got this big D lineman out here at Gunner, come on, man. <laughs> well, like they're saying, the Hulk is going to play t-ball with your kids. Right, come right, on, right. Dude. Like, You're this playing, is not games. safe. This is not cool. It is not. We got I, insurance around I've here. I've jumped over wedges. Uh, I was in London. I jumped over the wedge. Just to, I, I've yeah. seen a, um, a, a highlight yesterday. You jumped over the Saints. I've yeah, seen that. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen that. That was I mean, just that, it was either that or get plowed. Yeah, you saw how big them yeah, dudes were. Was, yeah, it looked like you was running full those speed dudes ahead, were, and it was like, bro, don't make this decision right here, brother. Please don't. Man. I had a collapsed lung versus the Redskins, coughing up blood on the sideline. I mean, I, I got a, a knee taken out, leg bent backwards. It's, yeah. Yeah. Oh Do you see gosh. the NFL making, like, a ton of changes to that now where, I mean, kickoff returns are minimized they're like you know they they, they took it they, they took out a lot of types of hits exactly they you know took they mean? took it out completely in my opinion you, right. you, you kind of demoralize the guys that you tell them they're not going to be starters but you're going to go and watch other people play the game that you love so you don't have any mm -hmm. outlet so there's no catharsis for you you're just watching people play the game that you love mm -hmm. That's how wild, do you deal with that bro. how do you deal with that get special teams you know it's like the, the participation trophy no get a, get a little niggas ball back something like <laughs> that so much, get yeah, out there for and real, play for real and I'm, real I mean, shit. everybody out there are third and fourth string. Most of them are linebackers and D-line because you have to have a little reserve for those mm -hmm. on your mm -hmm. active roster in case somebody goes down. Mm -hmm. You need somebody capable. But, I mean, us, like me, receivers, like you get the fourth receiver pot, spot and you got better play special teams. So I was really good at it. So I got to stay on the team a long time doing that. So I used mm -hmm. to always tease my uh, teammates, say, hey, when y'all done partying, I'm going to come out there with the mop. So hurry up and mm -hmm. do what you got to do so I can get in there and get my participation trophy. So... <laughs> San Diego State, that was a party school, too. Oh, you know it. Like, I know for sure that was a party yeah. school. Yeah, it was a... Uh... Come on, man. Tell me about some parties. So, it was, get, get to... there was a guy named Look, Hollywood. There was a guy named Hollywood Ray. Oh, he was winning. <laughs> 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 talking about the parties. Let's go. Let me talk. Yeah. Let, me, let me know. Yeah, so there was a guy named Hollywood Ray that ran this party bus that would go down to Club Safari and TJ. Mm -hmm. So, he told me, when I went down one time, we had a bunch of girls that we, we just won a football game. Mm -hmm. I'm taking a lot of people down. And... I remember him asking me, hey, man, these all your friends? I'm like, yeah. He's like, here's my business card. Call me tomorrow. 
Mm -hmm. I give you a job. I know you're in college. You could use extra money. <laughs> so I'm like, damn, this is like, this is like somebody telling me, here, here do something strange for a piece of change. I like, was about to say, <laughs> first off, I pimp my yeah, ride. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I was like, first off, don't be handing me your card when I'm out here partying. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I'm college. Like, yeah. I'm here partying. I'm not even thinking that, that far along. Yeah. But he's like, no, it's the, all these are friends. You make money off your friends. No, it's no sweat off your back. You just tell them, mm -hmm. come with you. I give you money. You tell them, come with me. And there was a competition at San Diego State for the buses to whatever bus you jump on is going to take you to that certain club over in TJ. Wow. So they made it easy for you to go across the border. This is back before all the, the COVID stuff. Yeah. You know, you're able to just yeah. go across the border. Be and, free. Yeah. You want to come back, make sure you got the right documents. You're right. good. And um, so I started bringing people on the, uh, the bus and we would go down to TJ all the time. We go to Club Safari and you go out there, you get the street meet outside, make sure you get back four or five of mm. carne asada tacos. Go back inside, this shoot a couple of tequilas. So flame bombs. On the right way back, now, make sure bro. you have enough room to get the beers down with some of the lemonades. You know what I'm saying? So you can <laughs> wake up to go to class the next day. I mean, Man. it's the science to it. It's the science to it. You work partying into your curriculum. It's like I got 12 units I'm taking this this quarter, and I'm gonna take these classes this time. Make sure I have an hour break so I can take my shots at lunch with the homeboys at the taco shop. And you come back <laughs> to school, go to practice, Man, have fun at practice. Partier. And you get out of practice, you go home, shower, change, do I your did. homework. <laughs> then you go to Mexico. What the hell, bro? What would I fucking do to live like you, bro? <laughs> right? What? Deferred gratification, man. I did not party in high school. I barely partied in college until towards the end of the, like, oh, the last two years. So you had all oh, so that. He was so just I waiting full just, steam ahead. Yeah. Yep. You were. <laughs> oh, 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 your world. Where's the bitches? <laughs> Let's have some fun. Where's the weed? Where's the money? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! I literally created a a, uh, a thought process on on campus, and we mm -hmm. started making these little T-shirts. It was called yeah. Superloose.com. We were logged in. Super Hit it. <laughs> <laughs> this is what. Come on, no, no, rap, 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 rap. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Rap, rap, rap. Man, bro, real. It was real. What? And then to be able to stay in San Diego after having that party legend status, I was able to go to the Chargers. So I stayed in the same house when I was in college, my rookie year in the NFL. That's crazy. So you were undrafted, right? Yes. What was that like? You So you were in San Diego and you didn't want to leave. You no. Just like, every opportunity is here. Let's just go for it. Well, they, well in, in, so there's a, hidden, there's a hidden thing with NFL that yeah. a lot of people don't know is that people pocket you, put bad press out on you so they can pocket you and pay you less money. Mm -hmm. So they knew that from their own backyard they had a good receiver that would go out there and willing to fit into the role based on the relationship I had with James Lofton. He's a Hall of Fame uh, wide receiver. Mm -hmm. He was my coach. So he said, look, I'll make sure you get the most money for your signing bonus if you stay here. And I was like, Yeah. He kind of ended my whole thought process because uh, Herm Edwards, who was from Monterey, yeah. knew me from when I was in Salinas. I was like, hey, I want you to come out here to the Jets. Bro. So I was, like, I was like, I'll go to the Jets for seven grand signing bonus. And uh, uh, Coach Lofton got me 12 grand to stay here in San Diego. And I was mm -hmm. like, you know, that works out to like the same because of the cost of living. He said, well, yeah, I thought of you. And I said, cost of living. So we give you 12. That is yeah. fire. Hey, it just made me realize, bro. Cali, Cali, Cali. You feel what I'm saying? North Salinas, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Boom. San Diego State. King of the party. King of the field, right? Who was your coach, right quick? Uh, Tom Kraft was the coach at San Diego State. Shout out to Cub. So next, <laughs> right? So next, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Chargers, bro, take me through draft day. Because I know for a fact it was a party after draft day, for sure. I want to know what was draft day like. So I had my mom at the time was working for Chicago O'Hare. So her and my sister and my brothers all flew out from Chicago. Mm -hmm. And they uh, were all hanging out, watching the draft. And it's going, you know, after a little bit, they're here, like, no, no calls, no calls, no calls. And then finally, when I signed with the Chargers, they're like, okay. My brother went to the store, came back with a 12, li uh, 12 case of Bud Light. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. And said, there's, there's me, you, and the brother. We're going to come. We're going to split these, and we're going to go through it. After this mm -hmm. is over. You're going to take us to one of these little college parties you used to always go to. Oh. I'm going to announce that you just got picked up with the Chargers, and we're going to see where it ends from there, right? He's like, you got your passports? Yep. Okay, well, let's go. And at first, it started out really kind of calmly because they knew I was pissed about not being drafted, so everybody's <laughs> like kind of walking on eggshells. Yeah. And then once I slammed the first beer, I was like, all right, you, you want another one? Took the next one, slammed the next one. It's like, mm -hmm. all right, let's go. All right, you, you didn't get drafted, man. Everybody gonna worry about that shit. But if you mm -hmm. come with this bobby shit all day, we're gonna whip your ass. So we still yeah. get your ass whipped or you go out here yeah. and have some fun. So let's have some fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I was like, yeah, let's go. Hey, mm -hmm. money coming in now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? F fix some of this credit, credit problems y'all got. <laughs> so look, man, 
going through that, like knowing like your whole life you want to be drafted and then go undrafted. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? How does that make you feel? Like, do you feel like all oh, these motherfuckers didn't really give me the, the respect that I was? You feel what I'm saying? Like, how yeah. does that make you feel? Oh, well, you know, you're competitive as an athlete. So you immediately go into, I got to prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. So I, I went in there with a chip on my shoulder. Basically, it just, it told me that I have to revalidate myself to a world that should already know who I am. Mm -hmm. Swallow your pride. Say, hey, they don't know who you are. And to this day, I never let that get to me. Like some people was like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, oh, I found that you played football, but I'm sorry, I didn't know who you were. It's mm -hmm. like, no, it's good. You don't need to know who I am. Mm -hmm. you know? But now you do know, or if you're happy, then that's good. I'm happy too. Mm -hmm. But it's just, uh, you, you, have to, you have to have strength of character. And yeah. I grew up with, with a mom that was a straight pit bull. So mm -hmm. I, if I didn't have that, that good character, I wouldn't have made it through. Because if I ever started smelling my own piss, as she would say, she would slap my ass backwards and make mm -hmm. sure I walked straight in line. So, so I was gonna say too, who inspired you to like keep going and playing ball? Like who who was the first one to let you know like, hey, you should do this. This is what you need to be doing. Too. Oh, it was it was my mom because she started mm -hmm. the mindset because mm -hmm. she didn't think I could do it. She's like, mm -hmm. you're too small. You look here, you don't get hurt. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna come crying to me if you get hurt. I was so like, so you had a point to prove. Yeah, so I had to show her that I was strong enough, tough enough at, at 12 years old. For I told sure. her, you know, I had to do it. And that first year, I won MVP of the league. So when wow. she saw that, she was like, okay. So then she just started yeah, we, poking me and, and pushing me and making mm -hmm. sure that. She would just try to tell me stuff like, you know, it's just me here and I need help with your sister. Your brother's already moved out. Mm -hmm. I need your help. I said, well, mom, I got football practice. I can't be over here cleaning and stuff. She's like, can you just do this real quick for me and then go? I said, mom, look, I got football practice. I'm going. This is important. This mm -hmm. is what I'm doing. And I walked out. And I never talked to my mom like that. You know, I always had respect to my mom. I wouldn't dare cuss at her because I, I like the way my teeth look. <laughs> oh, Lord, yeah, you don't yeah. want to have to go get you some uh, fronts. Because, yeah. you know, nowadays people just get them some fronts. You don't want to have to have a reason to go get yeah, you. Yeah, I'd have been, I'd have been dead at an early age. <laughs> <laughs> and did you play any other sports growing up? Yeah, I did basketball and uh, track. Oh, okay. I tried baseball, but I, I couldn't swing for for shit. And then yeah. when I, they put me at catcher. I was doing good at catcher, and then uh, I didn't take the mask off one time. And a dude tried to steal home plate, and I smashed him and split his nose. Coach Quite. was like, "You should play football next year." You ever heard of a back catcher? Huh? A bad, a bad catcher? <laughs> no, it's a, from, a bat catcher. To, you were supposed to help me out. No, man. nobody's <laughs> ever heard of a bat catcher. It's a made-up thing that you made up last week. Oh my! Episode. It's called a catcher. Oh, I thought you said you used a bad catcher. I was like, no. that's an oxymoron. I think they made up a position for him when he played Little League called bat catcher. That's someone like who stood behind the catcher and played because he wasn't good enough to play baseball. Oh, and he thinks this is a real awards. position. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. But no. <laughs> I tried to slide it in the last episode, like, yeah, bro, I played back catcher. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> that ain't a thing. Yeah, all right, okay, my boy. <laughs> and I just knew you was gonna be like, yeah, yeah, back catcher and catcher is the same thing, bro. I just knew you was gonna have my back. I know, I got real part. analytical, and I was like, man, I hope oh, I didn't offend him by getting analytical, no. but I'm really trying to process what he is saying. Oh, I don't think this God. is right right now. No, 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 it's not right. It's not right at all. Oh my, it's not gosh. a real thing. Back catcher. Is a back scratcher. If you want to do another, if you want to do another take, well, I agree with you. We can do that as well. No, man, I am just... for team participation. <laughs> All right, man. What's some of your hobbies besides partying? Besides, oh, partying. besides partying, man. Uh, if it's not dad duty, um, mm -hmm. I love acting. Uh, I do uh, acting, uh, commercial acting now. Just something yeah. to do on the side, just kind of entertainment. And plus, I like the the challenge. You know, acting is pretty tough. So, what's what's some of, what's some of the acting uh, gigs you have? Uh, just recently, I was in an IBM commercial. Uh, mm -hmm. I think still, I think it's still on their IBM website. But we did uh, commercial for IBM, and then before that was another one for Visible Wireless. Um, Fire. Yeah, I've done um, I've done Geico. Um, Damn. Yeah, there's a couple commercials there for Cedar Sinai. Um, mobile you work it, man yeah but uh it's, it's that's been fun there's something something to do to keep my mind occupied and mm -hmm. then um yeah outside of that too i've been in the cannabis space as well the cannabis space yes yeah I, and and you know because this is a publication you have to use the proper terminology in order to get the right vernacular you know out there. how so i know start speaking like it as if it's now a homegrown language i told you i was doing history last night i heard you talking <laughs> real civilized yesterday about weed you were talking about how scientific <laughs> it was i was like oh wow this is real nice but all i use it for is just to go to sleep man <laughs> you know what I'm saying? well that is a medical condition so <laughs> there, by, therefore you are justified in your actions hey. <laughs> I'm glad that this is medically approved podcast now. Yeah, no, you, you have to you have to use those kind of terms because people are they yeah. already look at it and shame, they try to shame you. So okay, you're gonna shame me. I'm gonna shame you for not knowing what I'm talking about when Straight you're up. trying to condemn me for the same thing I'm telling you in the scientific terms that people have accepted and believe widely and have been peer reviewed videos and tapes that have been out there that people know that this ain't bullshit anymore. It's real. Stand it's here up to stay. for your I'm not gonna argue that. <laughs> Gotta understand it, man. Hell yeah, they used to frown on this shit. 
they used to look upon this right now. You see what I'm saying? I yep. used to have to run away because I had about two little nickel bags on me. You <laughs> Shout know out our guys at Big Chief, though, too. You feel what I'm saying? Because now we're going <laughs> Big Chief. You see the bags. I went from nickel bags. Well, Big much? Chief is good. Hold on. Big Chief is. F- I didn't even look up there. What, what did I been doing this morning that I didn't look see up the to see screen, that? man? Shout yes. out to Big Chief. We got our guys man. at Big Chief helping us Shout out. Shout out to you, man. Yeah, let me go ahead and hit the <laughs> Big Chief. So you was um, a receiver growing up. So who was your favorite receivers you used to like growing up? Who was your uh, idols? Man, Randy Moss, Terrell mm. Owens, Chad Johnson when I was in college. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and thankfully, I was able to meet these guys. Like I, I used to train with Randy Moss every summer down mm-hmm. in Florida. That dude is competitive. Everything is a, is, a, is a gamble. Everything's a bet. Walk me through a workout with Randy Moss, please. Straight please. So, yeah, so he, he comes up in his car, gets out. All right, y'all, let's get going. But we've already been there for an hour waiting for him to get there. <laughs> Prime time. <laughs> yeah, so we're there waiting, stretching, I get yeah. warmed up, whatever. He gets out of the, the car, drinks a little water, puts his cleats on. All right, y'all, let's get going. I'm like, y'all, you can warm up if you want. Like, we'll, you we'll stretch wait for or nothing, my boy? He just... do a little, oh, yeah. little stretch. Okay, yeah, I'm straight. He's ready to go because he had already got up two hours ahead, and he was late because he was getting back from a run that he'd already oh, done. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, yeah, like, we view him as like, oh, man. But he dude just loved the work. He so loved he was the work. Like Jordan low-key. He, he, he got off on being better everybody at everything. So everything was a competition. Like, there was no mm. shutting it off. Everything. If you have come up with a debate, you had to win the argument. It was playing dominoes. You had to win the dominoes. Uh, push-ups contest, uh, sit-up contest, Damn. sprints, uh, weightlifting, how fast you can get done with all your lifts without taking breaks, everything. He, he got Damn. that little look to him, too, like that smile, like, yeah, nigga, I'm the best. Yeah, Randy got, Moss, that, yeah, shout out to Randy, shout man. Shout out to Randy Moss. Yeah, his slogan is bet that. Oh, my god. Bet, bet, bet that. Bet that. Bet that. I think yeah. I'm going to have to um, start using that, man. Bet that. I thought that. it was straight cash, homie. That, too. <laughs> Damn. Actually, I have, I have a T-shirt that, that says "Cash Only." So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have Damn. to. Yeah, that is one Dude, of the most Randy. iconic for us oh, older ones. That's yeah, the right? more iconic one. Give me. How you pay for that? <laughs> give me one safety and one linebacker. You broke the route for. Ooh, <laughs> uh, Brian Dawkins. I got picked up with the Jaguars because okay. uh, I wanted to play more receiver. Okay. First game, I, 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 first game playing with the Jaguars, I catched the game winning touchdown. Mm-hmm. But I was going, and it was the inside post, and mm-hmm. uh, there was supposed to be the tight end was supposed to check and release late to pull mm-hmm. the linebacker, and then you had the running back coming through in the back uh, f- uh, flat to pull the backside safety. Right. So I have a post going across the front side safety. I cross his face. Mm-hmm. Brian Dawkins is back on the other side. The running back got held up by the linebacker because the, the tight end stumbled. Yeah. So all, all plays work, and you have to be at your spot <laughs> to make it work. If on you're not time. there, one on person time. is not there, it messes everything up. I'm coming through, catch the ball, come down. Brian Dawkins' head is right there. So, I mean, the ball is here. His head is oh, right here. So if I pull shit. the ball down, he knocks the ball out. Yeah. If mm-hmm. I leave the ball up, my chin gets blasted. Oh, my God. And I had enough time to process that. And when I processed it, I said, you know, I held the ball up, made the catch, got my chin Busted. Oh busted. my God. So you didn't break the route. You just kept oh, going. No, no. You took I, no, it? I, I broke it in order to make the catch. If oh I didn't, I would have got gosh. hit before. So I created space away from him. So when I broke upwards, the, the quarterback had thrown the ball a little high. Yeah. Because he didn't know what I was doing. So he threw it at me, but high. Oh my God. And then gosh. when I caught it, I had to make that decision. It was, mm, yeah. Linebacker now. Held uh, on Ray that. Lewis. Yep. Scary guy. It was, it was third and short. <laughs> He's two for two. Yeah. He's Thir- two for two. Third and short, I have the inside hook route on uh, 444 F flat. So mm-hmm. I'm the inside slot going in on a uh, mm-hmm. middle hook where Ray Lewis is supposed to get out because the tailback checks flat. Mm-hmm. If he checks flat, Ray Lewis goes with him. Because Mark <laughs> Scott had just went with the tight end. So Ray I'm going right through the middle. But Ray don't go with the, the running back. He looks at me. And comes oh, right at. my gosh. I did it in a pivot and went out the outside. <laughs> <laughs> I did a pivot. GBS says, yeah, we're supposed to be making a left turn, sir. <laughs> left turn. Yeah. You turn, sir. You're going the wrong way. Rerouting. Sir, you're going to get cut. Please gotta, go the right way. <laughs> gotta go. Hey, bro. What? Dead end. Yeah, I did a pivot route, but a pivot route is a check route for the, the hot read if there's a man <laughs> coverage. This is still a zone. So I pivot back out, and then you got Rache Caldwell outside of me. Oh, my Look at me. God. What you in there doing, fool? Get up out the way. <laughs> <laughs> Drew Brees looks. Uh, Brees. Uh, <laughs> 
Lane changing. He like, yeah. God, what you doing, yeah. man? I, I, really, you? I try to duck, but I'm 6'5", trying to duck. Oh, ducking still in the damn gosh. way. And then you bring your, your your defender in the way, too. So Drew Brees rolled out that way. He didn't know what was going on. Mm-hmm. So then he's kind of looking looking at me and looking around and tries to throw the ball. at. But I try to dive and catch something. He's going to throw the ball away. Oh, so I'm sure trying to – I'm diving to tell the coach, I, I went for the ball. You know, I made Bro, a good effort. I'll, see, in them moments, yeah. this is when I get mad at the quarterback. When I'm watching, I'll be like, this bitch-ass nigga threw the ball at the ground. Nigga, throw that motherfucker in the crowd. You yeah. almost got the homie head took off. <laughs> man, man, take the flag. I'm cool with all. Don't be yeah. having the homie about to get his whole brain twisted and rearranged. Yes. And all. No. Yes. Throw that motherfucker to your mama in the crowd. Let everybody go to the next play. We'll be all right. Because we ain't trying to yeah. be running across Ray Lewis, man. He ain't got a visor room. He looked like a uh, greasy Brock Lesnar. Like, <laughs> come on, snap bro. Snap your head off. Yeah. Yeah, everybody else is running around with the little chicken wings out there. Mm-hmm. And this man right there with them turkey legs. <laughs> the turkey legs you see at the, at the fair. Like, hey, have you heard him tell somebody something in the game? And you was just like, oh, my God. Yeah. What'd you hear? I had a dude. He 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 told uh, Grant Matos. <laughs> uh, Grant Matos was another receiver. And he uh-huh. was going around. We had, um, it was a bunch route. It was a bunch right 28 truck where LT gets the, the, the toss. Mm-hmm. And we have to do like a sweep. We have mm-hmm. to close the edge. So then, <laughs> LT, if y'all don't know, is the Daniel Thomas. Yeah, okay. right, right before the, the play starts, we're in the bunch, and Grant Matos is the point man. I'm next to him, and I was like, Grant Matos, shout out to USC, former receiver. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's there at the, at the head route, and then uh, we have Antonio Gates inside of us. Mm-hmm. So Antonio Gates goes down to squash the, uh, squash the uh, DN, which is AD, Adela Thomas. And mm-hmm. then uh, Grant Matos is supposed to get uh, Ray Lewis, and then I got to go pinch down and get Chris McAllister, who comes down in, in, the, uh, in the box. This is tight. So... Right before the play starts, Ray Lewis looks right at Grant Matos and says, don't you come in with that child shit. I got kids your age, so if you don't bring that man shit, don't even look at me. Don't even come this way. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> yeah. Do you know that coming from Ray Lewis? I'll just be like. Yeah. And he got them bug eyes like he like he killed somebody. <laughs> Don't you come in here with that man shit. Like, uh, man, yeah. Why y'all kick it with this nigga, man? Why y'all got me outside with Devo today, man? I thought yeah. these niggas was cool around the corner, man. Oh yeah. my gosh, bro. So give me a um a kick return touchdown that's like your most memorable one that you know that you took back to the crib. I mean, like, did you get any like scooping scores on that? Um, I got a scooping score off That's of what Muff I was Punt. Meaning. Yeah, there yeah, was a Muff yeah, Punt yeah. in Tennessee. Uh, it was around Christmas time. I was with the Niners. And mm-hmm. um, uh, the guy, Daryl Morris, uh, hit the returner. Ball mm-hmm. popped out. I was like, look, I ain't getting the ball at offense. Yeah. This is mine. Do I you, got it. Man, that moment when you get the ball, like, and you played offense, and you're you known for scoring touchdowns, and yeah. you're on defense, and you get the ball, it's that one. It's an awkward moment. Like, oh, shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. oh. That away, like, oh my gosh, that moment, bro, is crazy. It's, it's like that moment when you get your nose hit and your eyes want to start watering. And yeah, your head just be like, yeah, or just jiggling all the Yeah, you just trying to get that thing mm-hmm. away. Yeah, it's like the ball's there, but oh, oh okay, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but yeah, the ball's there. You get it, you get its core, and then there's code where you're a special team or you don't, you don't, you can't dance. Because mm-hmm. I, I played during the the era where they didn't let you dance and. All that stuff, but yeah. there's a quote on top of that where your celebration should be a little. Hey man, look, you play yeah. special teams, man. Get up out of here. We score a touchdown. That's our job. You just go go clean that mess up that we started over there with the fourth and long. See, I feel like that's even more of a reason to celebrate because you guys are never in there. Mm. It is, but you'll get roasted, and you don't want to get roasted during <laughs> team <laughs> <laughs> team film review. It's, yeah. it's penalties. Fair. There's a whole like list of things you, that you learn as a rookie that you can't do ever, and that's like a NFL code. Oh no. On another note, though, like on a serious note, though, like tell me about how it was playing with LT, like Antonio, and then like Drew. That I, that has to be like your favorite quarterback, right? That you play with. Oh yeah, has to not like that, but yeah, no, come for on, sure, I, for sure. I, that would have been mine if I ever played. Like, it, how was that, bro? It is. It, it's surreal when you you look back. I look back and I enjoy it more now because I have the time to process mm-hmm. it. But as you're doing it. I actually took a step outside of myself and I looked mm-hmm. around and I was like, I'm literally around people who are going to be in the Hall of Fame. Like, like, there's so many people on this roster that are going to be in the Hall of Fame 
and I was there with them. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not getting the opportunity that I want to, you know, to, to enjoy my career, if I don't appreciate this, I'm doing a disservice to people who have never made it here. Straight Cause up. I have to be able to tell the story Straight of up. this as you know, this is another part of the team that you love. This guy did this and he was so humble. And this guy would come to my charity event all the time when he didn't have to, cause he's a celebrity, he's a star, but LT would show up at my events just to show exactly. love and pay homage. Uh, other guys like Antonio Gates, like, Hey, what do you need? What mm -hmm. do you need? This stuff like guys like Vince Jackson, uh, R &P, rest in peace to Vince. Mm -hmm. But um, he signed jerseys and pictures and stuff for my kid while he was still playing in Tampa. I mean, yeah. just you, you build those connections with people and they're just awesome That's human fire, beings. Man. But to watch them play, it's like effortlessly doing stuff that you're like, damn, could I do that? I don't, I don't know if I would have did it that gracefully, but let me practice real quick. You start trying to do the practice, yeah. the LT cut, mm -hmm. and you just realize how powerful it is and how beautiful it is yeah i actually took time to appreciate that while i was living it so i mean that was that was the best part about being on a team with those guys man that's fire bro just sitting here thinking about it like knowing like any in any team like even with jordan bro without the bulls there wouldn't be no jordan you feel what i'm saying so oh, yeah. by mm -hmm. him being a part of that team and all of these people is about to do this and that and hall of fame and bro you're a pro bowler yeah, I mean, you know what? They, you know what they, I mean? They like, gotta have somebody at that big that's game what I'm, cleaning up. After come on, bro. Done. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like that right there, 100%. being a part of that is just like that's man. It's history, bro. Yeah, I mean, football's history, that, bro. like ultimate team sport where it's such a big roster and there's so many pieces to it. Mm -hmm. the, the the piece that a lot of people don't understand is that the the fans are probably fifty percent of game day experience. Even for the mm -hmm. players, because mm -hmm. the players, I mean, just the quality of the game is better when the crowd is in it. There's just the, that energy to get that many people in one place mm -hmm. and then have that sway of energy, the, the feel of it. As a, as a player, you can feel that switch back and forth. The momentum changes. It is a real thing. As a as a receiver, do you have a, a memorable miss pass, a drop that you that you didn't catch that like that you like it got to you a lot yeah well, which one it, was it it was my first pro bowl because i hadn't been playing receiver i got injured um 2004 i, I tore my pec tendon and mm -hmm. i missed my first pro bowl so mm -hmm. i didn't get a chance to go but in, in turn there was a couple games that were left in that season and mm -hmm. they had just v drafted vince jackson mm -hmm. so when i got injured vince got in there and he earned the starting spot and i never got my spot back so i had to stay with special teams mm -hmm. so that very next year i was just a, a demon on special teams. I was trying to yeah. kill everybody. I was mad. Mm -hmm. Like nigga, like somebody owed me money. I was out there trying to hurt people. <laughs> and when I got into the, the, the Pro Bowl at the game, I remember I went in and I shook Terrence Newman. I was opening the end zone and Derek Anderson overthrew me. Mm -hmm. And I was so mad because I needed that touchdown to yeah. prove that I was still a receiver. One to myself, but two to the team that told me that I was nothing but a special yeah. player. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, you know, to, to burn one of the elite corners in the league and get a touchdown. Mm -hmm. So I had some, you know, some bragging yeah, rights when it yeah. comes contract time. Burnt your yeah. ass. But Got yeah, that, that, that missed opportunity was real because that, that affected my money too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But man, guess what, bro? It's all good. Because oh, yeah. you still a king to me, bro. Mm -hmm. Straight hey. up. Look where you at, man. You right here on no jumper no talking about jumper. that shit. And I'll that's why I don't no play shit. basketball. Hey. Not to be literal, but None I don't have no jumper. And <laughs> Nick, oh, shit. Look, Not so to look, get into the weeds. But. What's the name? What's the name? And nobody probably never asked you that, huh? On a pod or anything. Oh, no, they asked. They, they did? Uh, oh, you, you play basketball? You play no. Basketball? Oh, you must no, play no, no. Not basketball oh. about the missed pass. Oh, no, no, they don't. They don't ask about See, that. See, that's what I'm saying? Because, yeah. man, it's all hurdles in life. We're getting over that shit. Yeah, it's like how you you move past it or you dwell on it. Like I once scored four touchdowns in high school but you know yeah. you Al Bundy that nigga on me <laughs> now watch this though you didn't told me so much bro fuck that that shit is yeah. a fuck that yeah you feel what I'm saying oh, yeah. nah you didn't did real. too much bro that's... and I see what you did there I see what you did there on, you, and you just you just did the human element where you heal you heal you help me move past the trauma yeah you know what I'm saying yeah, I'm new to this, okay, but okay. I'm true to this. You yeah, know this, yeah. yeah. That's real what one? I was trying to do, man. I'm not going to cry on the podcast. <laughs> I'm not going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> it's just because it's smoky in here. Yeah, man. I don't know what's going on, man. It's incense going on, it's man. It's my uncle's Crazy incense. incense. <laughs> it's my uncle's incense. <laughs> hey, man. So, man, hold on, man. Hold up. Because now you, you my homie. I feel like we, we homeboys oh, yeah. now. We mm -hmm. friends, man. Yeah. If you ever in a situation where you got an insecure home uh, dude coming in, but with the trying to pistol whip you, bro, hit me, oh, bro. Oh. Call me, bro. Yo. Let me because I want to know, bro. I just seen what they were talking about. And I want to know it from you, bro. Yo, what happened? It, it's pissing me off that anybody would even fuck with the homeboy. Like, keep playing. Hey, I, I, I appreciate on, that. Let before it happened, let's go. <laughs> what happened, man? So, um. 
I had I bought this new house uh, from Jerry Porter when I went down to play for the uh, Jaguars. I mm -hmm. moved to the same house he had, so I wanted to get some adjustments on the house. Mm -hmm. There was the contractor, general contractor. He comes to the house, gives me estimate. I said, "Yeah, okay, I like your estimate, so I'll, you you do it." Mm -hmm. But I ended up going with my homeboy, yeah. who I found out later was a general contractor, and his business was struggling. So it started to get the better quote. I went with the homie. Mm -hmm. So the guy that was general contractor, okay, well, if you ever think about something in the future, look me up. But I, as he was there, I got to know him. He was a longtime Jaguars fan, and his daughter was a cheerleader on the team as well. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, cool. Then he was going out of town, and he's like, yeah, hey, come watch the Monday Night Football game at my house. Mm -hmm. You know, my daughter's going to be there. My son will be over there, so it'll be, it'll be uh, a nice little event, and you can just hang out and see my house because I was asking him some ideas about how to switch my um, family room up. So, you know, mm -hmm. long story short. Yeah. You, people are thinking that I'm trying to date the girl who's a cheerleader, but I'm not. I don't have any friends down there anyway. I just moved down there. And you know what I'm saying? Bro, you in the league, bro. In. You know how it is. You, they gonna think you trying to fucking yeah. steal some bubble gum, and they don't even yeah. know you worth a trillion yeah. dollars. So it's like it's like first of all, I'm I'm a, I'm a father. I have a daughter yeah. at that time. Mm -hmm. So she's 19. I'm 31. It's like come on now, really? I'm here trying to do that. So mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not uh, Epstein. We don't, yeah. we don't get down like that. I wasn't raised right. like that. Right. So I'm over there hanging out and. I don't know the history of her personal life. You know, mm -hmm. like I'm saying, this is the daughter of a dude that I know that I became friends with, trying yeah. to know what she's doing, and her brother's coming over with his, husband, his wife. Yeah. So uh, she has some crazy ex-boyfriend that thinks that she's cheating on her all the time. So he comes into the house with a, 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 a trash bag, not trash bag, um, a grocery bag with one hole in it. Like Jason Voorhees, Wait, Friday the 13th, bro. the first Stop version it, of it. Bro. This it. dude has a... Trash. I mean, a grocery bag over his head, but only had time to put one hole in there. Are you serious? Yes. And he comes up. You should have got me. up and whooped his ass, man. But he came up behind me and had the gun tapped on my oh, head first, okay, and I turn okay, around, the gun's right, there. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. So he got the burner. Yeah. The gun is yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's trying to yell at me all this stuff and all this crazy ass shit, and she's screaming yeah, at him, dude, or whatever. You, you don't have no gun on you. You feel what I'm saying? So, I'm watching yeah. football. I just watched Monday Night Football, and I just cracked two beers open and. You just got the phone with her brother because he was on his way over. Right. And then this dude's over here tripping, like, you about to try to get, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's just going into all kind of explicit stuff. And I'm like, bruh, look, it ain't even like that. Yeah. But, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you have some interesting stuff, let, you can talk about this, man. Yeah, man, it'll be good. Like, mm -hmm. you over here trying to shoot people or something that's not even worth it. So yeah. I'm trying to talk to him, but the whole time I'm assessing where's the window, where's, where's the room, yeah. where's he looking at, what's his range, in my range. Like, For y'all on YouTube that don't know, now my boy is like, man, it's getting hot in here. Oh, I'm yeah. about to go ahead and. Break wide, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah. I, mean, I grew up in Selena, so I've yeah. already had guns pointed at me. I've been right, bro. shot at for almost tried to get stabbed. You, you different, like, just, it's different now. Yeah, so now you, it's like yeah. revert back to your 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 upbringing. Right. How is the situation? How do I defuse this? What do I have for a weapon? Is, is he in my range? Can I just harm him? Is there an escape route? If I escape, is she going to be here? So. Mm. She starts talking to him, and she starts moving towards the door, talking to him, and acting like she's not. And all of a sudden, she breaks right, and she goes out over this. There's a there's a, uh, a upstairs we're in upstairs mm -hmm. in the family room she jumps over the railing down to the first ground like laura craft i was about grabs to say a revolver, like, bro, like some damn tony grabs montana a, shit grabs she a revolver went, like like jet lee <laughs> i mean and points it back at him says get out of my house he goes over and starts shooting at her and no. when he goes out the door he goes out the door i barricade the door and put the chair right there yeah. to keep him from coming again because he starts trying to bang back in Man, shooting i'm out of here door. bro i'm the only one in the house without a gun so what do you want me to do? Do you want me to stay here or do you want me to go get help? Man, get your ass out of there. I went out that second story window, landed on the ground, did like a little commando parkour roll. I believe roll. I can fly. <laughs> I told you. Out there. It's the only time it'll be sung. Okay. When you got to get the hell up yeah. out of there, bro. Fuck that. Get busy living or get busy dying. Fuck that. Yeah. And I'm going to get busy trying to get the fuck away from her ass because yeah. you got some shit going on and I don't know about. Yeah, and, uh, I don't want to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. So you did and the right I, thing. I went, my to, I went to the neighbors to tell them to call nine one one. So I'm yeah. banging on their door. Though. They better tell somebody because I'm, I'm a, gone, I'm nigga. A, I know you fast, nigga. You was, <laughs> I know you was up out of there because that ain't got nothing to do with you, bro. Yeah, that ain't got nothing to do with you. And and then that that sucked that you had to be in the middle of that though, yeah. bro. All over somebody being jealous, man. Don't be no hater when you see somebody out here shining, man. This was a good brother at this time and you tried yeah. to paint a wrong picture of him, bro. We ain't getting down like that. The world need to stop doing that shit. So all of y'all little dirty mackers and you jealous little cats, talk to the man first. Ain't no coming in there tripping off some shit in your feelings, bro. You're one yeah. person. He don't have them same feelings. You can't be taking that shit out on somebody else, bro. Grow the fuck up. It's true. Yeah, that's what she, she told me, too. I, when it was all said and done, she's like, you know, thank you that you were there. Because if you weren't, you know, 
I, I could be dead. But I didn't know she had a restraining order already before the dad told oh, me that, hey, no. I'm going out of town. You should go hang out with my daughter. It'd be cool for you to, to meet her and hang out. I'm like, okay. Like, in my yeah. mind, I'm thinking, like, okay, yeah, it's free beer. Let's go. Bro, yeah. there's and some then, more info. There you got a good. blessing from the pops, man. Yeah. So, wait. This dude, she already got a restraining order on Kyle? Yeah. And I didn't know that. So, you know what I mean? But you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm over there with not bad intentions, so no, I don't ask that. My mind don't even go there because no, I'm, like, I'm hey, just saying that I'm thinking yeah. of his background. I ain't got nothing to do with you. It's yeah. like, wait, what the hell? Girl, tell me you got restraining orders on nigga. Yeah. He already had issues already. I don't even like when people tell me I got they got my location. Why? Why? <laughs> I'm with you. You better cut that off right now. <laughs> hell no, man. Yeah. I don't like that. No. Y'all and Start letting us know what's going on. We can avoid all these situations. Because I guarantee you, if my brother would have known you had a restraining order on somebody, he wouldn't be kicking it like that. Trust and believe. I know that man is smart enough not to have been in that party. I'd have been eating popcorn at home watching Game of Thrones. <laughs> Putting a little salt on it. You feel what I'm saying? Do you see yourself coming back for a part two to kick it with us, bro? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 100%. I already said, I mean, y'all got applications. I'm signing application. I'll be the janitor. Come in here. The get, janitor. Get the vacuum lines going on the hardwood floor. That's how good I am. Yuri! <laughs> <laughs> Somebody trying to... No, <laughs> <laughs> no man. That. You guys got a great atmosphere here. It's, it's, it's like that, that um, like the Boys and Girls Club when you're back home when you're a kid. You, yeah. know, you got that feeling, that hometown feeling like, oh, this is going to be live. I, know, I, I told Seth that. I was like, man, this is going to be live. Appreciate that, yeah. man. I hope nobody take this the wrong way that been on these uh, episodes thus far, but we got Sharpies around here, man. Hit it up for us oh, right there, yeah. man. Yeah. Grab, one, grab one of those, man. You got to go ahead and sign one. of Hit, hit them under the uh, Compton one, the, the one that looked like some gang shit. Yeah. Hit it under, no, under white, they, under. There you go. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and sign that for us, bro. You want me to cross it out? No, nah, he ain't gonna do that. <laughs> no, you see his face? He got sick. No, 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 don't be doing all that, okay? It was fun for a minute. Now you started doing some real shit. All right, good. All right, hold on cool. real quick. Crips! 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 <laughs> Shout out to Adam22, yeah, hey, man. That's the call, man. Hey, Josh, this is, starting to get, this is starting to get great, man. These are getting fun. Yeah, man, we really appreciate you, man. We know you got some things to go do right now. We know you on a leash. Your wife about to start blowing you up. She about to damn near you get this much time. All right, hey, you made the Don't most. Be you made the most of every minute. Today. I maximized it. You know what I'm saying? Totally. I'm I'm a believer in Elon Musk path of you just maximize. That's right, you man. Get two seconds, make two million. I, I I don't have that kind of time. I, mean, I make my two two or three dollars. Last question. <laughs> I make two or three dollars before we go. Can I drive your Cadillac with the Lambo doors? Yes, sir. Sharon's cat. I love it. I love it. That was dope. I knew you were going to bring that Come on! It's about time. March is here and the madness has officially begun. It's time for you to shoot your shot and score big on the nonstop action with my bookie. Predict winners in each round of the MyBookie Bracket Contest for a chance to win a Bitcoin. A Doodle NFT currently valued at over 50000 and over 100000 more in cash prizes. That's a gang of Chalupa. Whether you're filling out multiple brackets, betting the national championship winner, or simply looking for a group props, MyBookie has you covered. You need to sign up today with my bookie using promo code NJSport to make your first deposit, earning a free entry into my bracket contest. Selections for the bracket will officially begin on March 13th and close on March 17th at 12 p.m. Don't be late. So make sure you get a, your deposit in now with NJ Sport to secure that free entry. You need to bet anything, anytime, anywhere, and you know with who. With my bookie. It's your boy, Big Ski.